experience. Okay, so she uses a curriculum, a very well-respected, excellent curriculum. And they've been using it for the three years, but it sounds like she has young kids. She's maybe, you're wondering, hmm, I wonder what it would be like if we didn't use a curriculum. Right? And when the younger ages, you don't need a curriculum. Like high school is a different game, and I'm going to lead a workshop tomorrow at 1130 about homeschooling high school, um, dispelling the myths. But when they're younger, you can unschool, you can do the eclectic, you don't have to have a curriculum. So maybe you're brave. Or if you want to have some kind of, okay, in that, and I'm so, yes, and I'm so glad you said that because you get to honor, you get to trust yourself and your own comfort level. So it sounded like you said, we like some things about that curriculum, but other things we don't. So maybe that's your leap of faith, having a family meeting. You know, and talking about say, hey, you know, we've been using this curriculum. Which parts do you think are working really well? Which parts do we want to continue using? Which parts do we think that maybe are not the favorite? Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that curriculum. It may mean that it's just not a good fit for that child's learning style or interest or where they are. And then say, and they might say, oh, I really like this, but I don't like that. Well, you can go find something else that works for history or for something like that. You can come to homeschool.com. We have a resource guide. See, we're the neutral body. So we, we have links to all the curriculum, all the learning resources out there. So have that meeting. Maybe that's your, just your little tiny leap of faith. It's that you keep what's working and then you, you substitute in something else. And remember, eclectic homeschooling is used by 80% of homeschoolers. It's the most popular style because it's personalized. You know, so use the structure that you need, as much curriculum as you need, but test out the other stuff. Trust yourself, trust your kids. So when you say it's not working, yeah. um, does that mean we're not having fun and liking it, or does that mean they're not reading and writing in cursive and that sort of thing? Because in my mind, I think it's not working. Yeah. I'm like, well, they're doing these things. Yeah. Don't be like Okay, that's an excellent question. She said, she said, when you say not working, does that mean that they hate it or does that mean, you know, they're not making the growth that I think that they should make? And I think it's more one than two. I think it's more if they're hating it. If you're stressing about it, then I would say it's not working because the curriculum itself, that has different growth at different times. Um, and so I wouldn't, most curriculums, they work if they're a good fit for you. So I'd say it's more one than two. If you're not liking it, if you're stressing, if there's tears, if you're not having fun with it, and I don't mean occasionally having a bad day or, oh, I hate this, that's different. That's kind of being rash. But if you're seeing a pattern of, oh my gosh, we've tried this for three years, their history program sucks. You know, well then get something else that's better for history. Maybe it's an online program, maybe it's PBS, maybe it's videos, maybe it's field trips. There's so many beautiful ways to learn. You know, so many reading programs, so many math programs, don't chain yourself to just one because it puts a lot of pressure on that curriculum too, right? It's pretty hard for them to be great at every subject. That's kind of that school in a box mentality. But remember, we don't have to. We don't have to follow only one curriculum. We can pick and choose. For example, Charlotte Mason, I love their nature books. You know, I like some things from Montessori. I like Waldorf. You can learn about all these different homeschooling styles and pick the ones that look work best for you. Ooh, I love having that timeline up around our thing. Ooh, I love having centers in our home. I love having a, a block center, a science center, a reading center. Change, experiment with all these different things because you're not, odds are, you're not going to use the same method all the way through. You're going to be changing all the time, so don't be afraid to change. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it is. If they're hating it, it's not working. That's great. Any other questions? How are we on time? Okay. We have two minutes. Okay, so last activity right before you go. Close your eyes. I'd like you to do a visualization because visualizations, visualizing works. You've probably read stories about POWs who were imprisoned. And to keep themselves sane, they visualized themselves playing the piano or playing golf. And then when they were, re when they were released, their piano playing was better, and so was their golf playing, even though they never picked up a, you know, a set of clubs and they didn't have access to an instrument. So now I want you to visualize in a perfect world, what does your homeschooling look like? 
What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it sound like? And imbue this visualization with positive emotions because that gives it rockets to take off. Remember, you are now giving your subconscious instructions of where you want to go and the type of experience you want to have, the type of people you want in your life, the type of resources that you want, the feelings that you want. So let's just take one moment of quiet here for you to visualize in a perfect world, if money were no object and failure were not an option, what would your perfect homeschool look like, feel like, sound like, smell like? see a lot of you smiling. Okay, that's wonderful. Write that down if you can. Write down that vision because when you get in the weeds, you're down in the well, it's a little harder to remember. So try to write that vision and maybe even find some kind of a little token, something that reminds you of it. Is it a smiley face? Is it a heart-shaped rock? Is it a magnet that says joy or love? Find some kind of a token, a reminder of that vision that will help you when you're down in the weeds. So thank you everyone for coming. Did everyone get a free copy of Homeschooling Loving It, even the people who came in later? No. Oh, okay, it looks like we're out, but we have tons at the booth. So if you come on by, it's booth 701, the homeschool.com booth. I would love to meet with you. Tons of time this whole weekend if you have any questions. And I'll autograph your book for you because it'll be worth a million dollars one of these days. And thank you, everyone, for sharing. I really appreciate it.